What's up? So this is a tutorial about creating stylized hair with ZBrush. Um, I'm actually working with a professional concept artist uh, by the name of Lauren. You can see her information below. This is her concept here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of uh, for Lauren so that you can find her work. But basically we were chatting about this and <clears throat> this stylized hair can be a really tricky um, it can be a tricky thing to tackle in 3D and, and finding the right balance of how to replicate and translate that in 3D can be really difficult. Also, depending on what you're trying to create, um, for what purpose you're going to use this 3D model uh, has a lot of influence on how you might approach it. So really, this is going to be a three-part tutorial explaining really how would I go about creating something like this, as well as um, potentially other stylized hairs, just my thought process for that. And uh, so here we go. The first, the first part of this is gonna be focused on planning. After that, there'll be another part, which is the sculpting, which will be time-lapsed and I'll be talking over that. And then part three is gonna be going, uh, I'll be just demoing real time how to use splines and ZBrush for cleaner results. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about, I'm gonna show some references and stuff and um, explain why you might wanna do uh, both sculpting and use insert multi-mesh splines and ZBrush. So anyways, um, this, is, this is more detail about what we're gonna cover here in part one. You can see part two and three as well. Uh, but for now, I'll just talk about part one. So the first question you'd want to ask yourself is, uh, what are you using the hair for? And I guess I could also show you, this is the concept, right? And here is the, the end result of the 3D model. Um, of course, you know, I could go and clean this up further, but um, for the sake of demonstration purposes, this is, this is where I've land on translating this. Uh, this concept here provided by Lauren. So, um, so yeah, uh, what are you using the hair for is really like the first question I would ask myself. If you're going to just create a statue, um, that's probably the simplest one. You just want to try to make this, um, replicate this look as closely as possible. If you have a good concept you're going off of like we do here. So that's kind of an easy one, but if you need to do animation, um, that's, can be a lot more complicated. I think the way that I would, I tend to approach this myself is, um, I try to, I try to do more of a look dev scenario where, where I do treat it more as a statue at first, um, and then really nail the shapes and the styles. And then I can think about, okay, how do I actually straighten out these hairs so that they can be rigged in skin and animated? Like how much will they be animated? Is the hair going to be blowing in the wind or is it going to just be uh, manually posed by animators later on? And those kinds of things, are, are there going to be dynamics on the hair? Those kind of things all play a big, big influence on how you might construct the hair. But again, in general, I think the best thing to do is to just really hit the look of the, the concept initially and then worry about the construction a bit later because honestly, like construction type work is more uh, technical details as far as I'm concerned in the, the artistry and actually capturing the shapes tends to be the, the harder part once you understand technically how to do things. Um, so. This is going to be mostly about creating um, the concept for that reason, um, how to how to replicate what you see in the concept. And when doing that, we can look at, uh, I have all kinds of references here. We can look at some of these and, and just kind of uh, dive deeper into understanding what they are. So one option could be for stylized hair might be something like Valorant. Um, I guess also I, I, before I get into that, I just want to mention that I sort of like break this up into to four distinct parts of like types of hair, um, stylized hair. Um, so there's spline and shape lofting. Um, so that's like where you just use splines and nothing else. How do they get to the point where they're just using the splines? Like um, 
we don't really know. They, they might have done like a rough sculpt first and then and then use splines, but you can see like each one of these pieces being so clean, it seems unlikely that they were sculpting these like this. Um, and more likely they used a spline and then they drew out a shape on a spline. They lofted that shape um, to create this and you get like a very clean look. And sometimes this is like absolutely what you want to go for. I think that especially when you're doing animations, this, this kind of style can be helpful. Um, but there's various levels of success and also I think like design wise you want to consider that because if you start to get like too evenly dispersed with the same shapes um, that can be less appealing than potentially mixing it up. So like something like this, this is super cool but it's sort of even, even shapes throughout. Um, so when I see things that are more mixed up I think it's a little more successful. So there's there's very small pieces, uh, medium and large. Um, but these are like as as I mentioned before, these are all just the spline methods. That's why it's so clean looking. Um, so that that might be a style you might consider. Um, and then the other option is um, a mix. Well, let's go into this one first. The sculpting method um and again like these references i don't really know how the artist necessarily did it i'm just looking at it i'm guessing that's probably how they how they they did this particular hair like to me this looks pretty sculpted um fairly certain about that one um something like this you know there's like a level of cleanliness to it that um it isn't like the cleanest but it I think it achieves what you want so it looks like this is probably sculpted and, or if it wasn't it was it was dynamesh later on um similarly with some of these things like sometimes you just need really basic shapes and and that's like the style you're going for i think this is great um this is like a much more complicated one it could have potentially used splines to do this but if i were gonna do this um I would probably sculpt it and potentially have like an insert mesh that is this little curly thing uh, and then like merge it and sculpt it cleaner. I think that's how that might have been done, probably sculpted. If not, it's just lower resolution now. Um, so so that's, this is like the spline method, this is the sculpting method. There's also like just straight up modeling and the reason why I suspect this is modeling is these are like very large shapes that have very interesting taper. Um, and they seem super clean. So I think that maybe this person really might have just modeled this, but again, it's just a guess, not, not totally sure. It could be done with various methods. And a lot of times really like it's, it's not the final look of it might be a combination of a lot of methods leading up to that. So, um, but this is really like, in my opinion, what, what tends to be the most successful is a mixture of spline and sculpting uh, that's been merged so you can you can take actual spline pieces then merge them to your sculpt and then um, and then just create like a very clean look um, so i think that some of this might have been done here because there's some like larger pieces in here um, this one might have actually been all spline now that i look at it but i think it's definitely been merged at some point um, this one obviously sculpted here and then some spline flyaways. So this is a, a pretty good example of, of the two things combined. Um, one thing that I'll note is I think something that's really important about when using both methods is uh, the transition from, from a, a spline type lofted shape to the main sculpt. If it's like too harsh, like it looks like it's just crashing through that tends to not look as nice. So it's good to, to dynamesh the pieces together and then smooth out that transition so that it feels like more natural um, if this is the method that you're going for. Uh, but these are like really good examples of potentially a mixture of sculpting and um, splines. So you can see flyaways here that are probably some sort of spline. And then maybe, maybe some of this has been sculpted. Hard, hard to tell again but that's how I would do it personally. Um, so that's, that's 
the the four methods I have here. We're going to focus on this one here. There's not going to really be a lot of practical use of splines in in this example because, like from here, sure you can get like these little pieces uh, as more like splines, and that's cool, and that's probably a good way to do it. But these these like very complicated chunks with all these little pieces inside, um, to me that's that's kind of like sculpting is is the way to go, especially when you have like a big mass and there's just maybe some cuts into it. So that's what we're going to do with that. Uh, and then I started to look at this earlier. Um, so I want to go back to it. It's just looking at different games and, and how they might have approached it. Uh, Valorant looks like to me like they're doing the spline modeling here, um, probably because it was the best way for them to deal with the animation side of things. Um, so that makes sense to me. Similarly, you have Overwatch. Um, they do actually have like big chunks here, it looks like, on this particular character. They, again, these games might might mix a lot too, um, but in this one, at least, I see the sculpted version here, and then, yeah, maybe these are just splines in the back, and then uh, Dynamesh together, and then some additional sculpting, because this is definitely like a big sculpted chunk. Um, yeah, so you can look at those things. Those are cool. Uh, this is, um, so this is more like what we're doing here with these two games. Um, Arcane would be very different. I, I don't know exactly how it was done, but, uh, I suspect that they, they actually use a lot of methods and landed on a, a hair, a hair card kind of system. Um, and so like, if you're going to use hair cards, that's like a very different beast and how you're. Uh, creating the textures for that and placing them. That's not at all what we're doing here, but um, there's other there's other tutorials on that process that are worth checking out. I would say though that like some of the stuff that you see here, um, like this looks like it's spline generated and then maybe sculpted on a little bit. So oftentimes what you'll find is, is people will rough in the shapes as uh, in ZBrush to, to find where to put the, the cards. And so, um, that is helpful, even if you are gonna ultimately use just cards. And uh, then I have some Mielgo type stuff, which is very stylized and very cool, but I think this is like um, a lot of like really complicated uh, cards and perhaps uh, even like X-Gen or, or some sort of like groom on top of that. Not quite sure though. Can't say for sure. Um, sort of to wrap this up is, and maybe one of the most important things here in this sec in this part is to just mention that um, when you're doing hair, stylized hair, it's really important to remember this sort of like um, percentage scale here. Like depending on what style you have, it, these numbers might differ. But just from like a design principle standpoint, this 70-20-10 is, is oftentimes like what you'll notice about the more successful um, stylized hair pieces that you see when things are very uh, consistent in, in shape it tends to be a lot less interesting so it's something to think about so if you're gonna maybe lean away from your your concept at all I would try to keep this design principle in mind um, and so uh, primary would be the 70% secondary would be the 20% and tertiary would be the 10%. So there's just an example of what primary, secondary, and tertiary forms are. This is this reference is not by me, but primary being like just a nose, and then secondary being like a nose with some shapes on it, and then tertiary would be now there's like little wrinkles and stuff. Um, and so in, in the case of hair, we could say that let's find a good one to look at. Um, so maybe like the primary shape would be like just like the big hair cap here and then the uh, tertiary might be just like the really small flyaways and then the secondary would be like the larger chunks um this is cool like pretty pretty much in alignment with the the 70 20 10 i think because you get uh well maybe not so much with the the tertiary but the primary and secondary um but yeah, you'll notice that there tends to be this, uh, this is a good one. Um, when, when you have like this like big mass and then a few flyaways, it's a nice balance, right? 
Um, so something to look at when you're looking at your references, which which of these are doing that, and then you'll probably notice that, oh yeah, it's more interesting when it's, it's mixed up like this more um, with larger pieces and then a few smaller pieces. So this is very successful, I think. Okay, so that's kind of it for here. In the next section, uh, it'll be a time lapse and we will show you the sculpting for this. See ya.